Well, I've got to admit, we are feeling a lot of first season Koss and Pasha vibes here at the Emirates. We are just going to have to swallow what is being brought to us because we are under fire. We are under the gun and <laughs> could still be just 90 minutes away from searching for a new job. Welcome back to The Stress. That is Arsenal and our journeyman save here in FM 24. It's episode number 111 of Bottom to the Top, and I am Mr. Cellophane. We are still not in great shape in the league, currently sitting in 15th place on 17 points after 15 matches. Not anywhere close to what we want to be. We are 20 points off of the top of the table already although to be fair Manchester United is just running away with it they are nine points clear of second place Everton we are also only four points clear of the drop things are not going nearly as well as we would have expected we followed things up after our last episode the one nil draw at Derby County the one nil loss I should say the draw in my brain was just Wishful thinking. We followed that up with a match at home against Wolves, who were in eighth place at the time. They've now moved into a Europa League place because they beat us very handily by a score of 2-0. And when I say very handily, I just mean on the score sheet, we outshot them. We beat them in the XG table, although a lot of that came from the penalty earned and then missed by Bakayo Saka. We held on to the ball 59% of the time we completed a higher percentage of passes we won a higher percentage of tackles and headers and yet we still got run out of our own stadium by a team that frankly we should be beating and wasn't the first time this year either we have, however, had success in the Champions League. We have won all five of the matches we've played so far. This is number six. We are on the road in France. We are taking on Marseille, a team that everyone thinks is inferior to the squad that we are putting out. We've already won our three road matches in the Champions League we've already had, which means we have two home tilts left in the month of January if we get that far. We've made some tactical tweaks to some of the roles in our 4-3-3 that we're going to try out in this match. It's going to be Dixon Dockris in goal with Alan, Buteris, Saliba, and Kemshaw as our back four. BJ Hoon still out with an injury. A midfield three of Declan Rice, Mikias, and Florian Wirtz, Bakayo Saka on the left wing, Martin Odegaard on the right, and Jonathan Reyes up front. Now, all of our strikers are on nice little goalless streaks, so hopefully we can break that today as well. Not sure if a win today is going to save our job, but it will give us an opportunity to qualify to go straight through to the round of 16 in the Champions League, either us or whoever takes over as the new Arsenal manager. Still not 100% sure that will be us by the time the knockouts start in this competition. Hopefully, though, it will be. Now, Barcelona unable to win their last match. They also did one of the first five, so they're on 15 points. Even if we end in a draw, we find ourselves at the top of the table in the Champions League. First shot of the match, though, went to Marseille, but Arsenal turning things on in the last couple of minutes. We have played 20 so far. We still have yet to see a highlight. Partizan, the only goal of the afternoon so far, in Champions League competition. It coming against Fenerbahce. I'm not even sure Fenerbahce has scored yet in the Champions League. We'll have to look a little deeper into that. Although we really need to worry about ourselves and not everyone else. 29 minutes have been played. Ball thrown forward looking for Alvarez. Kemshaw is going to attempt to clear. Brown will track that down along the sideline. Send it far post. Finding Samuel Cow, who is able to beat Dixon Dockrace for his ninth goal of the year now was count on side that is the question that var is going to investigate right now and their verdict has come in and they have said he was in an offside position 
So the score will remain nil nil. Yeah, it looks like he just snuck behind the central defender. I believe that was Butera. Uh, so good job by Butera playing him offside. PSG taking a 1-0 lead over Borussia Dortmund. Uh, final third throw in from Marseille. Picked off by Declan Rice. Sent forward, though. Nobody in the vicinity. Pellegrino up for Brown. Blocked by Odegaard. Wirtz finds Reyes. And the counterattack is on. Thrown forward. He's got Bakayo Saka. Can he get past the defenders? He kind of can. Plays in the middle. Makias. Save made. Rebound comes right back to him. Puts it just inside the far post. And Makias with his sixth goal of the year in all competitions has put Arsenal up 1-0. A beautiful ball forward to Bakayo Saka. Didn't really get to show the pace uh, past the defense. Makias actually looked like that ricocheted off of the post and not a save by Dumont. We have sure hit the woodwork quite often in these matches as well. We had a chance to score from Gabriel Martinelli in the Wolves match, but of course it clattered off of the frame of the goal. Declan Rice in the midfield will drop it back. William Saliba moving it to his right foot ahead for Kemshaw, who will give it back to Saliba, dropping it for Doc Rice to get things restarted up the left side this time. Butera with it, waits for the pressure to come before laying it right back to his goalkeeper. Butera once again up for Alan, finds Mikias with some space in the midfield. To his right, Florian Wirtz. Wirtz, heavy touch, loses control. Alvarez will regain for Marseille. And Dumont will end up with it. Looking to start it forward. Going long. Cal cushioned header down for Sotelo. Comes back to Cal in the middle for Sotelo. And yeah, we just got untidy. We thought we had gotten the ball back. And we had for a brief moment. Turned it right back over to Marseille. Sotelo in a great position. And there was really nothing Saliba could have done after that. Because when he knocked it away... His momentum carried him essentially out of position. I'm giving Saliba the benefit of the doubt right now. Tie score at the half as a result. Angelo Sotelo with his equalizer in the 44th minute. Marseille with a slight advantage in shots on goal 6-5 in this match. I do think in general that things are working out fairly well tactically for Arsenal. Five shots on goal. Three of them have found the target, which is two more than we were able to manage against Darby County. We control things here in the 57th minute. Kem Shaw moving it forward gingerly before playing it to the safety of Declan Rice. William Saliba with it now. Thrown ahead. Makias back for Alan. He's got Bukayo Saka along the left wing. Saka running into trouble. will lay it for Butera. Across Alon with it. Ahead, Florian Wirtz looking for a runner. Nice through ball to Bakayo Saka. Can he square it? Back post. Odegaard, but the save is made. Declan Rice will play it once again to Martin Odegaard. However, Odegaard finds himself in an offside position. And that one looked awfully close. But close only counts in horseshoes. And hand grenades. Martin Odegaard not having the greatest game. So we're going to pull him off in the 20th minute. Zaid Albasha will take his position. He's actually going to go in in place of Florian Wirtz. We're going to move Bakayo Saka back onto the right side. And bring in uh, Eliseu Ribeiro as our left wing. We could have moved Mikias out there as well. Now that I think about it. Corner kick. Saka Butera flicking it on. Bamba flicking it away. Ribeiro, though, tracking it down, sending it into the middle. Cal looking to clear. Saka has it, though. In the middle, Albasha back for Saka. Saka with the shot, and he finds top corner, his fifth goal in all competitions to restore Arsenal's lead. It is 2 1, 63 and a half minutes into this contest. And it's good to see us on the road, on the front foot. And especially ahead on the scoreboard. If only we could do this against lesser competition in the Premier League, as well as we can, apparently, in the Champions League. 20 minutes remain in this match. We've had a very good game from Arsenal so far. Even though Marseille has managed to take five more shots than we have, we have been more efficient with our shots. We've taken better shots. 
we've still dominated possession and we find ourselves ahead on the scoreboard, which we as a coach so desperately needed. Unfortunately, it's not going to move us up in the standings in the Premier League, obviously, because this is not a league match. This is Europe. But a win is a win is a win. It helps with the mentality of the team. And hopefully the coaching staff, now that we've qualified for the round of 16 of the Champions League, will be a little bit more forgiving when we head to Stamford Bridge in a couple of days. And even if we do manage to pick up our first road victory in the league of the season against Chelsea, who has in the couple of days since we last played, dropped into fifth place in the Premier League, we have a bit of tough sledding ahead of us after that. We take on Aston Villa, who, yes, are in the championship, but they are in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, and that's where we are going to be taking them on. And then we head back home for a matchup against Manchester United, who has not yet lost in the league this season, either home or away. But Chelsea is our primary focus, and that is where we are going to keep our attention right now. And we're going with essentially the same lineup as last time, with a couple of minor changes. It's going to be Dockers in goal, back four of Alain, Buterra, Saliba, and Kemshaw. Rice, Mikaeus, and Verts are going to remain in the midfield. Martin Odegaard is going to drop down to the bench. Gabriel Martinelli is going to come back in as our left wing. But Kai Osaka on the right-hand side, while Jonathan Reyes does remain in the middle. He did not manage a goal in the last match, but at least he came closer, made a good account of himself. We'll take that. Both teams coming off back-to-back -back losses in the league. We did manage a win in Europe, however, against Marseille. So we are the team in better form, at least on paper. It's Chelsea and Arsenal. Just one other Premier League match going on right now. Brighton is hosting our old team, Fulham Football Club. Chelsea, eight wins in 16 matches on 28 points. They sit in fifth, and they are going to get the first highlight of the match. A throw into Talbot, knocked away by Martinelli. Declan Rice in control. Talbot, though, is going to knock it away from him and take it in the corner. Thrown into the middle, coming way off his line was Doc Race. The ball will fall to Kendry Paez, who will just put it into the empty net. And Doc Race came off his line to challenge for the ball. And I think he ran into a player. Sure looks like it. And kind of jumped up. Landed awkwardly and found himself out of position. So there we go. Down 1-0 already. Without even registering a shot on goal. So we are going to demand more from our team as Cottage takes it up for Chelsea. Up the left wing. He's got it along the sideline. Drops it back for Casado. Cottage into the middle. Adrea go off of the post. Cleared by Declan Rice. Jonathan Reyes getting it back from Bakayo Saka. And the counterattack will start. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to bring anything. Federico Guerrero with a goal for Fulham. They are, by the way... Yeah, you don't see them on the screen because they are currently in third place. Tied even on points behind on goal difference behind Chelsea right now in the Premier League. Chelsea leading with six shots on goal to our one. <sighs> Beating us in the XG battle. We're, we're winning the possession game. But does that really matter? It, it, it doesn't. Martinelli's feeling frustrated. I feel you, dude. I absolutely feel you. Uh, we're going to ratchet up the uh, positivity just a little bit. Hopefully, please, guys, can we get something done? We have managed to get a shot on target in this half. Still no highlights for Arsenal. And Martinelli is coming off. Odegaard will make his way on. I think he's going to be better off on the other side. So we'll bring Bakayo Saka in there. Although Saka, I'm not thrilled with him Either uh, Martin Fernandez will be our new striker as we make two changes with a little over 25 minutes remaining in this match. Fulham, a 2-0 lead now. Toshimitsu Endo adding one at the end of the first half. Four shots on goal. This is not going to cut it, guys. This will be 
if things don't change, this will be our seventh, our eighth 1-0 loss on the road in the league. Fernandez can't control it. Banaza throwing it forward, looking for Caro. Settled down, though, by Butera coming back. Butera up the left side, chipping it into the middle. Fernandez on and in. In his fourth goal of the year, the flag stays down and Arsenal comes back to tie it up with just over six and a half minutes remaining in this match. What a recovery by Butera as he moves it forward, chips it into the middle. Fernandez finding space amongst three goalkeepers in front of Lohmann, putting it past Jurgensen to tie things at one. And I honestly, sincerely hope that this is where we end up. Saka will be replaced by Tobiso Bad Boy. Mikaeus will come off in place of uh, Achille Kleiss. I'm trying to get some fresh legs out on the pitch. Declan Rice not having the greatest match, but you know, ratings-wise for a defensive midfielder, what do you expect? He really didn't factor into the Chelsea goal. Six minutes added on will expire. We only managed five shots on goal in the match. But it was our last one that made the most difference. We come away with a point, And more importantly, a non-loss on the road in the Premier League. So I feel like we could be well served by trying to keep the momentum going. So we are going to take on Aston Villa in this episode. Triple header, baby. In order to see if we can just keep on going. Because after Man U, we looked a little bit ahead. And then we've got West Ham on the road currently in third place in the Premier League. So it's a gauntlet every three or four days. A couple of changes to be made. We're going to rotate things around a little bit for the Cup. It's going to be Dockers in goal, Ribeiro, Butera, Kemshaw, and Nymark in as our right back. They'll be our defensive line. Haudi is going to be at the base of the midfield behind Albasha and Hernandez with Mikias and Bad Boy on the wings behind Martin Fernandez. Hopefully Fernandez can add to his goal-scoring tally. He's got four on the year. Right now, Mikias is our leading scorer. Wasn't the way we planned it. So even though we are the home team and we're playing competition in the division below, still a little bit of nerves. We lost our last match at home. However, we did manage to take points in consecutive road tilts. But of course, the rain is coming down heavy here in London. Makia's heading it on and just over the crossbar and out of the reach of Zavko. First shot of the match going Arsenal's way. Hopefully we are able to keep this pressure on. We may need to ratchet things up a little bit, although... With the weather, not sure. Good possession, though. Makias throwing it forward, looking for Fernandez. It's going to be knotted down by Abbott. Fernandez is going to regain possession, however. He's got it up the left wing, dropping it back toward Albashra. Davis moves it away, but Ribeiro collects it. Ribeiro, deep, across. It's going to go off of the foot of Dorrington. Hop over the prone body of Zavko. An own goal for Arsenal, and I will take it any way that I can get it. Sure, do I want to pad the stats of my own players? Absolutely. Uh, but Ribeiro throwing it across. He thought he might have to be so bad boy along the far post. It's going to ricochet off of the hip of Dorrington and over the body of the goalkeeper who already laid out. Now, Fulham is also in this competition. They are leading Sunderland by a score of 1-0, a goal from Kim Young-Suk. Bad boy, low on the set piece. Fernandez hits the post. The woodwork has not been our friend so far. Chelsea also leading Wolves 1-0. Man City and Liverpool yet to get a score in that one. Looks like Fulham did miss a penalty kick, however, and the chance to go up 2-0. Arsenal controlling in the middle third once again. Kem Shaw will just lay it back for Dockress. Way out of his zone. Plays it to the left. He's got Butera there. Butera with space ahead for Albasha, moving it toward the sideline, carrying forward into the middle. Fernandez settling it down. Plays for bad boy, bad boy. Nice switch. Hernandez across. Mikias, far post and goal. Seventh of the year. Gustavo Hernandez picking up the assist. Arsenal with now a pretty solid two goal lead. Just over 30 minutes into this first half. Good ball over for Bad Boy. Found Hernandez. What a pass to Makias. Kept it out of the reach of the defender. 
to put it home past Zavko. 2-0 is your score. Alphonse Gomer missing that penalty, but Kim Young-Suk picking up his second in the match. It's now Fulham 2, Sunderland 1. So as of right now, we're taking on either Fulham, Chelsea, who we just lost to, Man City or Liverpool. We have beaten Man City already twice. Hopefully we can make it a third time if we happen to match up with them. That would be kind of nice, I think. 2-0, though, is the score here at the Emirates, and that makes me very happy. So it'll be, well, I mean, there's no points involved in a knockout competition like this, but what would be th points in three consecutive matches. So we are on a nice run. Fernandez looking to the right wing. He's got bad boy. Bad boy pumping it past his defender, and he just misses it wide as he sends it across the goal mouth and out for an Aston Villa free kick not a bad showing so far 55 percent possession in favor of arsenal nine shots on goal only two on target so we do have to get a little tidier there chelsea with a 2-1 lead over wolves sunderland however has tied things up with the cottagers it is now 2-2 still no score between man city and liverpool arsenal once again in control butera ahead for Macias. Macias manning the left wing right now al bashra Taking his time, challenged by Clayton, but Fernandez will sweep it away to Ribeiro, who carries it forward. Ribeiro deep in. Shot save made by Zavko. Rebound picked up by Martin Fernandez, his fifth goal of the year. We've gotten a goal from a striker, ladies and gentlemen, and life is good. Florian Wirtz will take the place of Macias in this match. Uh, anybody else who's been playing a lot of minutes will bring Fernandez out and play Matteo Moreno. We'll make two changes with uh, about 19 minutes remaining in this contest. al -Bashra almost made a monster mistake, but Ribeiro picking up the loose ball after it was played to him by Fernandez, and Fernandez following up the initial shot that Zavko was able to save and potting home the rebound for goal number five on the year, making it 3-0 Arsenal as we are cruising into the semifinals of the Carabao Cup. Man City now leads Liverpool 1-0. So City, Chelsea, and Arsenal, as things stands, are in. We'll see what happens between Fulham and Sunderland. Imagine if that one goes to penalties. Interesting. Fulham has quite the history of penalties in cup competitions. Three minutes added on at the end of this one, but it will not matter. 16-4, to four, your shots on goal. We held the ball for 59% of the match. And the own goal off of the hip of Alfie Dorrington and the tallies from Macias and Martin Fernandez were all that we needed. 3-0 your final. We have one, two of our last three, and hopefully this gets everybody off of our backs. Who am I kidding with Manchester United coming into the Emirates next? <laughs> This could be the end. But you know what? I was saying that on Friday about today's episode. And here we are, three matches later. Four, technically. Four matches later, and we are still in charge of the Gunners. Will that still be the case after tomorrow's episode? Well, we're just going to have to find out together. Please make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.